What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and today we're checking out the brand new 21.5 inch iMac with a Retina 4K display. Now all the 21.5 inch iMacs have been updated, the Retina and non-Retina models. So we get Broadwell processors, Thunderbolt 2, faster RAM, and new graphics processors. But in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Retina 4K display, which starts off at 1499. That gets you a 3.1 gigahertz quad-core Intel Core i5 processor. Again, that's Broadwell. Eight gigs of RAM is standard, but you can configure this up to 16 gigs, and you cannot upgrade this yourself, so you wanna do it when you order your iMac. It also comes standard with Intel's Iris Pro Graphics 6200 GPU, which is integrated, so no more dedicated GPU for this iMac. And it also comes standard with a one terabyte 5400 RPM hard disk drive. So that's kind of a slow drive and I would highly recommend upgrading to the one terabyte fusion drive, which is only $100 more. That adds a 24 gig SSD in addition to the one terabyte of hard disk storage, which is used for booting the system and apps, which significantly improves speed. So getting to the unboxing, they make this very simple. All we have to do is pull a tab along the top to allow us to open up the box, which flips four. And inside we'll find our nicely cocooned iMac just covered in tons of styrofoam. First thing we want to do is pull out the accessory pack. So inside our accessory box, we'll find all of our new Magic accessories, which includes the new Magic keyboard and the new Magic mouse too. You can also replace or add the Magic trackpad too. Now I've already covered those accessories in detail in previous videos, which I'll leave linked in the description below. So of course we have our Magic keyboard wrapped in this sort of frosted plastic. It's nice, lightweight, and ultra thin. It also has an internal rechargeable battery. So we no longer need to replace the batteries like we had to with the previous generation. We also have our Magic mouse too, which again has an internal rechargeable battery and is charged via a lightning connector. Of course, we also get a lightning cable for recharging those accessories. So again, all I have to do is connect your accessories to your iMac and it'll charge it for you. We also have our literature packet, which includes a quick start guide, some warranty information, and a set of Apple stickers. We also get a microfiber cleaning cloth for cleaning the glass display. Now, interestingly, this is no longer Apple branded as it usually has been in the past. So getting to the Mac, it's actually fairly lightweight. It only weighs 12 pounds, so I can easily pick up this package and remove it so we can get the box out of the way. Once we have the iMac on our desk, we can go ahead and remove all these styrofoam pieces. Now inside one of those styrofoam pieces is the power cord. So all I have to do is remove the plastic, pull it out, and we'll set this aside until we're ready to plug it in. Of course, like all iMacs, it's covered once again in this sort of styrofoam envelope, which we have to peel off. So all we have to do is peel off the flaps along the back side and pull up to set it aside. But wait, there is more. So of course we have plastic covering the pedestal. So what we have to do is peel it off and lift it up so we can get it off entirely. And then we have plastic surrounding the bezel and the front glass. So I'm just gonna go ahead and peel off the edges here. And once I've done that, the plastic sheet comes off neatly. Now in terms of the design, it's pretty much unchanged from the previous generation, which is just fine. It's a really nice looking all-in-one computer with this all aluminum shell with this razor thin edge. Now, of course it bows out toward the center to accommodate all the internals of the computer. So along the back, we'll find this pivoting aluminum stand and it's not spring loaded like it is on the much heavier 27 inch iMac. Of course, we also have this black Apple logo in the back, which is actually part of the radio system here. So we need some transparency through this aluminum for Wi-Fi to work through this computer and the Apple logo serves that purpose. Also at the center toward the top, we'll find a set of dual microphones. So again, one faces toward the back and one faces toward the top and it's etched into the metal and is nearly invisible. Now taking a look at our IO, it basically looks the same, but it has been upgraded here. So we now have Thunderbolt 2 in addition to four USB 3.0 ports, a gigabit ethernet port, in addition to an SDXC card slot, and of course a headphone jack, which does integrate optical output if you have a compatible cable. And along the left side, you'll find your concaved metal power button, which has a really satisfying click to it. Also hidden behind the stand is the single fan exhaust vent, so it keeps the computer very quiet. And of course, toward the center, we get our power port in addition to a Kensington lock just below it. So if you want to securely fasten your Mac to your desk so it doesn't walk away, uh, you can do that with this accessory. So while we're back here, let's go ahead and connect our power cable. So the power cable itself is angled slightly, so it works with the pivot of the stand and it fits nice and flush. So flipping to the front, let's go ahead and hit that power button to get it booted up for the first time so we can take a look at that really sharp 4K display. So once again, the display is covered edge to edge in this glass panel, which has an anti-reflective coating, which is a bit better than the previous generation. In fact, if you look at them side by side, again, you can see the tint here is much darker on the 21.5 inch iMac with a 4K retina display than the non-retina model from the previous generation. 
But of course, this is still a glossy display, so you'll still see some of that reflectivity. Toward the top edge, you'll find your FaceTime HD camera, good for 720p video. It's basically the same camera from the previous generation. We also have an ambient light sensor and an LED indicator letting us know when the camera is active. Now toward the bottom, we'll find our classic iMac chin. And of course, we'll find our Apple logo toward the center. But if you look down below, you can see that razor edge incorporates the stereo speakers and the ventilation. It's a really nice design, even though most people won't even see it. And the speakers themselves sound really good. It's actually kind of surprising. You have a good amount of bass and dynamic range, so they sound nice and clear. And I find I really don't need to add external speakers with these. I'm pretty satisfied with them overall. Now carefully laying our iMac down flat, we can take a look at the underside of the pedestal, which is wrapped in this sort of plastic foot, which allows the iMac to move freely across the surface without scratching anything. And of course, all of our regulatory labeling is hidden down here in addition to our serial number. Now getting to the most important part of this review, the display. So once again, we have a 21.5 inch 4K retina display, but that actually means this has a resolution of 4096 by 2304. That's actually greater than standard 4K, which also means it's using a custom timing controller, the same one used in the 5K iMac. That means this cannot be used for target display mode because it's higher resolution than standard 4K and the current Apple hardware can't support this resolution over a single cable. But this is a huge improvement over the 1080p display. So if you look at them side by side, you can see just how much clearer the 4K Retina display is compared to the 1080p of the previous generation. But the other big story here is the color gamut. So both the 27 inch and 21.5 inch have new backlights, which significantly widens the color gamut of both displays. So colors are much more vivid. In order to achieve this, Apple has switched away from standard white LEDs for backlighting and is now using red green phosphor LEDs, which expands the color gamut. Now Apple is actually calling this a P3 display. That's actually actually a technology used for digital movie theaters. So that means this display is capable of displaying more shades of red or green. Now checking out the performance of this new iMac on Geekbench, we see a single core score of 3713, a multi-core score of around 12,500. Now if we compare this to the original or the last time I reviewed the 21.5 inch iMac when it got this super thin design, you can see it's a pretty significant jump. We go from 3,000 to 3,700 and 9,000 to almost 12,500. Now in terms of graphics performance, this is where things get interesting. Remember, we now have integrated graphics instead of dedicated graphics. So with Cinebench, we can see our OpenGL score was around 46 frames per second. And our CPU score was a little south of 600. But if we look at the 2012 iMac with dedicated graphics, we're seeing a slight gain here. Generally speaking, the graphics performance of the integrated graphics is pretty much identical to the performance of the dedicated graphics on the previous systems. Now the real impediment for this computer is the standard hard disk drive. So if we look at the speed of the disk, you can see the read and write speed are really low. Now if you compare this to more modern Macs like the 15 inch MacBook Pro, that computer has a read speed of around 2000 megs and a write speed of around 1200. That makes a huge difference in terms of performance. So you spend a lot more time watching your icons bounce on the dock as they load. It also means you spend a lot more time looking at the spinning beach ball. But once again, if you get that one terabyte fusion drive, that speed bottleneck goes away. Now there is is a lot to like about this iMac with a 21.5 inch 4K display that's crisp and clear with bright vivid colors. It's a fantastic display to spend a lot of time behind, especially if you're reading text, looking at photographs or watching video. And now you can watch full 4K video from YouTube or any streaming service, or if you're a video editor and you wanna edit 4K video, you can actually see it on your 4K display. Now, ultimately I think you have to be really careful about the pricing here. At $1499, you're only $300 away from the base 27 inch iMac with a 5K Retina display, which gets you discrete graphics in addition to Skylake processors. And of course, an even larger display with more resolution to work with. So you really have to want this smaller form factor. And once you add a one terabyte fusion drive, which I highly recommend, I actually think it's a must here, you get even closer to that baseline 27 inch iMac. But I think it's quite clear that like the 27 inch iMac, this retina display will be dispersed across the entire lineup. So it should be a lot cheaper within a year. But what do you guys think? Would you prefer the 21.5 inch 4K iMac or the 27 inch 5K iMac for only $200 more? Let me know in the comment section below. So that's gonna do for me in this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.